This is Entertainment Tonight, the most watched entertainment news program in the world. It's a special Entertainment Tonight from the set of Cinderella. Oh, my God! We've got glass slippers for Whitney Houston and this little princess herself, Brandy. Bob, you're going to love this movie. I bet. From the dances to those dazzling duds, the music to the magic, we are there for every dash of fairy dust. Welcome to this very special weekend edition of Entertainment Tonight. Here from the mad, mad L.A. premiere of John Travolta and Dustin Hoffman's new film, Mad City. We're sharing the big evening with the stars. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Bob Gowen, here on the fantasy set of the production of Cinderella. Now, you know the story. It's about a, a prince and a pumpkin and how dreams come true. This production is bringing together Whitney Houston and singing star Brandy and, of course, a whole lot of Hollywood fairy dust. <laughs> This timeless tale of glass slippers and true love waltzes in with the first Cinderella in braids and a sassy fairy godmother. Who are you? I'm your fairy godmother, honey. You? You got a problem with that? Because if you'd rather have some old lady in a tutu sprinkling fairy dust on your Oh, no, no. Oh, oh my God! God. E.T.'s footman followed every facet of this production from the first look at the set. This is so dope. Through six weeks of filming, <laughs> to the very last scene. That's a wrap. Yeah. Ten minutes ago, I met you. The songs are the Rodgers and Hammerstein classics that Julie Andrews sang for the original TV Cinderella in 1957. Impossible. 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 But the musical arrangements have been updated by legendary producer Arif Mardin and the creative team behind such Disney animated musicals as The Little Mermaid. I've always dreamed to be some type of animated Disney character. And, um, and to be the first African-American Cinderella, that's, that's history. What's your name? Cinderella. With this production, Cinderella, Cinderella. is finally a story for everyone. Brandy's prince is Paolo Montalban, Jason Alexander his faithful valet. You don't know anything about her now. Except that she's beautiful. Whoopi Goldberg and Victor Garber are the queen and king. <laughs> this rainbow cast has fairy godmother Whitney Houston to thank. She's also the executive producer. And for over four years, she's struggled to bring this multiracial approach to the screen. The families of Rogers and Hammerstein are delighted. Thank you, Thank you for doing it. Everybody knows Cinderella, basically. It's in, it's in every language. Why shouldn't every child... In any country there is, enjoy it. Looks like little Moesha is growing up pretty good, isn't she? Well, it's going to all come together when Cinderella hits the air Sunday night on ABC. Jules, back to you. Whose foot fits the fabled glass slipper, let's get back to Bob Goen. Back here on the set of Cinderella with those incredible sets and some fantastic songs. And for Brandy, well, being a princess means those dreamy dance numbers and those out-of-this-world clothes. Whitney Houston is radiant as the fairy godmother. And whether she's lowly Cinderella or the belle of the ball, Brandy is every inch a princess, even when she's racing around the set in Cinderella's wedding gown. Go, go, go! Famed costume designer Ellen Mirajnik needed more than fairy dust to create these clothes. We have satin, and we have pearls and diamonds and crystals. I've had to have someone behind me all the time. Just how Ellen made those glass slippers is her secret, but she used every fabric imaginable for over 100 costumes. This is raw silk, actually. Whoopi Goldberg's gowns are made from antique Indian saris. Whitney's glowing dress is hand-sewn with metallic thread. And stepsister Vianne Cox got even more. Your sister. It's a fake butt. <laughs> Getting all these costumes to glide across the scene fell to choreographer Rob Marshall and to director Robert Isco. Brandy had never waltzed in her life, and that gown sure didn't help. When I tried to dance with you, I almost fell. In the arms of my love, I'm flying over mountain and meadow and glen. But even with those eye-popping costumes and flawless footwork, Iscove needed some Hollywood magic. Quite possible, it's possible. Computers filled in parts of Cinderella's coach. And after Whitney flew in front of one special effects wall and Brandy rode by another, they were spliced together. 
fairy dust and fantasy background were added later. It's a composite of about 25, 30 layers for, for that shot. Things are happening every day. They are sparing no expense with the wardrobe or the elaborate dance numbers here. You could say that it is costing them a princely sum because the Hollywood rumor mill has it that Cinderella is one of the most expensive made-for-TV two-hour movies ever made. Back to you. Okay, Bob, it looks like a lavish production indeed. An old late line. Well, now let's see what Bob Goins stirring up at Cinderella. Producer Whitney Houston has waved her magic wand and come up with an incredible list of co-stars for Cinderella. Take uh, Queen Whoopi Goldberg and a princely Jason Alexander, for starters. And now, if you please, the crown with the grease, some fall de soie with reels. George Costanza never acts like this. And when did you ever hear Whoopi Goldberg warble? Do you love her because she's wonderful? And who is that charming prince? Well, to hear them talk, they're all primetime crusaders for family entertainment. There are no explosions. There, you know, everyone has their clothes on. You know, it's well, you hard explode. to get. Well, I do implode. Implode. That's implode. right. I always get that confused. Jason Alexander signed on as the prince's valet as a way of returning to his Broadway roots. And so his two children could watch some quality television. I can tell you as a father, I can't find them. I search the tube all the time going, what can I sit down with these children and see? You're not like most girls, are you? What do you mean? Nothing. I, I didn't mean to offend you. 24-year-old Paolo Montalban calls Broadway home as well. Plucked from The King and I, Paolo still can't believe that 30 million people could see Cinderella, his television debut. Because you, you just don't believe it. Things like this just don't happen every day. And for Oscar winner Whoopi, she returned to TV hoping to get a new generation hooked on great American musicals. For little kids who have never seen people just spontaneously burst into song and dance with swelling music and fabulous costumes, it's a reintroduction for them. He will meet someone tonight. I can feel it in my bones. You'll feel it in your bones if he doesn't. What? I think Whoopi Goldberg was a pretty good choice of casting. Not only does she look pretty regal down there in that tiara, but she also keeps things pretty light on the set. Jules, back to you. Come back. Mr. Goen goes one-on-one -on -one with Whitney. Your executive producer. Yeah, so... that's another job. I had two jobs on this thing. I mean, are you really crunching numbers and sitting at the desk and... No, I ain't doing all that stuff. Whitney Houston, Cinderella's fairy godmother, sits down to talk about her producing, her princess, and finding her own glass slipper. That's next. Right here. Welcome back to this special weekend edition of Entertainment Tonight. I'm Julie Moran, and we'll bring you back to the stars on the red carpet here at the Los Angeles premiere of John Travolta and Dustin Hoffman's movie Mad City. But first, let's go back to the ball. Cinderella's ball and Bob Goen. Whitney Houston may be the fairy godmother when the cameras start to roll, but behind the scenes, she wields the power of a producer. I sat down with Whitney to talk to her about the music, the TV movie, and the magic of seeing her Cinderella brought to the small screen. All the wishes in the world are poppycock and twaddle. Your executive producer. Yeah, so... that's another job. I had two jobs on this thing. I mean, are you really crunching numbers and sitting at the desk and... No, I ain't doing all that stuff. Yeah. Right. I got the pull. You can make the phone calls yeah, and get things done. Yeah, I got you, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's one tiny little thing before I forget it. You must leave well before the clock strikes 12. Whitney had once wanted to play the role of Cinderella herself, but opted for the fairy godmother and hand-picked Brandy to step into the glass slippers. Did you make the phone call to Brandy? Yes, I did. I what did. was that like? All I can remember was... You know, I remember that. Yeah. Mama, mama, she wants me to play Cinderella. And for like my sort easily turned to horses. Such body roll and fiddle dee dee of courses. You've done gospel and you've done right. done it all, but this is show tunes. Is right. there anything different for that? Well, I I'm a musical I'm a musical buff. I love musicals. Oh, I from okay. a child I've loved them. So this music to me was like a dream come true. I could actually sing my fantasy of being Julie Andrews is so oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But the world is full of zanies and fools Who don't believe in sensible rules And won't believe what sensible people say 
Whitney told me that the multi-million dollar film was made for television because more people could see it that way. Things are happening every day. I wanted every child to see it. You know, I wanted parents to see it. I want old people to see it who can't get out. Right. To go into the movies. Right. Who, who can't, who don't have cable, you know. This is, this is national television. Here it is. Well, Jules, you know all of Whitney's projects are important to her, but you can tell this one is very, very close to her heart. And we can see all of her dreams come true Sunday night with Cinderella on ABC. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Bob. And it looks like fairy godmother Whitney's got a winner on her hands. But we now let's get back to Bob Gowen and the glittering gala of Cinderella. Of course, life on the set here isn't all glitz and glamour. I mean, Cinderella had to scrub all those floors. And her wicked step family enjoyed having her do it, too. What would you say to capture the prince? I don't know. Of course you don't. No wonder Cinderella wanted to get out of the house. Her step family is horrible, but very funny. We hide our flaws until, until after the, the wedding. wedding. Once in a while she has her moments of where she's just plain mean, but otherwise it's, uh, it's fun. Bernadette Peters is the menacing matriarch. Natalie DeSalle and Deanne Cox are the stepsisters out to nab the prince. Oh, if only he'd propose to me. I wish that he'd propose to me. I like being the stepsister better than I'm better than Cinderella. Because <laughs> hers, hers is a little hovel over She's there. Drab. I fell in love with love with love everlasting. The step family shares a show-stopping version of falling in love with Bernadette in the lead. But most of the time, they're just falling all over each other and the prince. Your Highness, you simply must... <laughs> Bernadette is a show business veteran, but Cinderella is Natalie's biggest TV break. She promises that ABC will have some devoted viewers, her family in Alexandra, Louisiana. Will they be watching? My mother's going to make a gumbo and invite everybody over to watch. I don't know, Jules. I don't know why everybody's complaining about the stepsisters. For my money, I, I like them, that, but that's just me. Back to you. <laughs> well, gee, Bob, maybe we can get you scrubbing some floors. But now, from the magic of Cinderella, we move to the magic and mystery in a trilogy of shows to lead this weekend's E.T. Selects. We are out of time for this weekend, but before we go, we want to thank John Travolta, Dustin Hoffman, and all those involved in the making of Mad City. It's a good one, and remember to look for it in theaters on Friday. Now let's see if Bob Goins turned back into a pumpkin yet. Bob? Okay, Julie, thanks a lot. That's right, the clock has struck 12 for us here on the set of Cinderella, so we have to go. But you can see all the magic Sunday night on ABC. In the meantime, we leave you with more magical moments from Whitney, Brandy, and that glorious ball called Cinderella. So long, everybody. I feel so honored to be so young and to have this part. And whoever it is that has any control, I thank you, Whitney. Thank you, everybody, for giving me this part, giving me the opportunity. Ten minutes ago, I met you, and we murmured, how do you do? I wanted to ring out the bells and fling out my arms and to sing out the news. Half my crew member said that they wanted to find out where they could learn to waltz like that. Look at my butt! It's beautiful! <laughs> oh, thank you! <laughs> We're supposed to be wicked stepsisters, but I would live here in a second. And it doesn't look wicked to me. It looks colorful and wonderful and exciting. And so I, I'm glad that I'm wicked stepsister. Let me tell you. <laughs> it took him a dozen times to get it right. I think he had it right the first time. He just kept messing it up so he could do it again. What's going on? Just playing a little get-together, nothing fancy, just family. Uh-huh. And a few close friends. Huh. And all the eligible young women in the kingdom. Mother. This is how I live. <laughs> These are my own clothes I brought from home. Impossible. Things are happening every day. I'm a musical buff. I love musicals. I, oh. from a child, I've loved them. So this music to me was like a dream come true. I could actually sing my fantasy of being Julie Andrews is so... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. When you're in that big old gown, you know, 
you can't get anything on it, you can't eat with it, so this is more comfortable, but I like looking the way they make me up, I like looking that way instead of looking like this, I look bummy. <laughs> Take it off now, I'm about to be brandy. Going home now, going to sleep.